Grand Teton National Park is a stunning and iconic park in the United States, known for its majestic Teton Range, its beautiful lakes and diverse wildlife. In July of 2022, we made a stop on our way back to Canada while on a road trip to Colorado so that we could run a loop around the park, 38 miles or 62 kilometers, which mile for mile would be one of the most scenic and beautiful routes we've ever run. Grand Teton National Park is in northwestern Wyoming, just 10 miles south of Yellowstone National Park. Established in 1929, it covers an area of 310,000 acres, including the major peaks of the 40-mile-long Teton Range. Our campsite was unfortunately south of the park, right on the Idaho border, a half hour from Jackson, and an hour's drive to Jenny Lake, where we'd be starting our run. We woke up at 4.30 so we could get ready and drive to the trailhead for a 7 a.m. start. So early. Ready to do this? Not quite. Give me five minutes. Okay, so we just hit our trail after a roughly one mile approach from where we parked our car at the Jenny Lake Visitor Center. And today we are running the 36 mile loop around Teton National Park. Um, plus our approach, so we'll be doing roughly 38 miles. What is that around? Close to 60 kilometers anyway, uh, with a fair bit of elevation change as well. The route is basically a long flat stretch here to start, and then a big gradual climb up through a pass on the backside, and then a huge descent, followed by a flat kind of 10, 20K to finish it off. So kind of one big climb and one big descent today. Uh, the forecast looks good for today. We looked at, uh, both the forecast for Jackson, the closest city, as well as the mountain forecast for uh, the Tetons themselves up at elevation. We're gonna be peaking out around 3,300 meters um, through the pass. So we do have to be careful, uh, watch for thunder showers in case they develop in the afternoon. Um, and there are some clouds uh, kind of off in the distance, but we're hoping they're gonna burn off because the forecast looked pretty good for today. So uh, we've got our rain jackets anyway. Like I said, we're gonna keep an eye out, uh, play it safe as we make it through the pass, which unfortunately is sort of around midway through our day. And we're expecting it to take around 10 to maybe 12 hours max today. We're hoping for closer to 10 or 11. Uh, so we've got a big day ahead of us. Yeah. Right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's this trail here. Yeah, this is it. So the route we're following is actually a collection of trails, and we've already managed to miss a couple little turns. We had to go through a parking lot, evidently. Uh, but fortunately, I was able to get a GPX track uh, from my good friend, Kerry Ward. He was actually the inspiration for us running this route today. Uh, we saw it on his YouTube channel about a year or so ago. I'll link to it below. And I've loaded the route onto my Coros Vertex 2. Uh, it's got topographic maps so we can see, you know, features like, like creeks and uh, the lakes. And it also beeps at me anytime we deviate from the trail. So we never end up running more than about 50 to 100 meters off trail before I get a little warning. Park is home to a variety of wildlife, including both black and grizzly bears. Hey, bear! And it didn't take long for us to have our first wildlife encounter. So 
that's a pretty exciting start to the day. Just a few kilometers in and we were just commenting on how we were expecting to see a bear any time. Carrie saw a couple right within the first few kilometers of his run. So we stopped and got out our bear spray right away and made our presence known. And at first we thought it was a grizzly bear based on the color, but uh, after I reviewed my footage, I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure that it was actually a brown colored black bear uh, based on the snout. It's really hard to tell the difference sometimes between the two bears, especially when they're feeding, because a black bear, when it's bent down, when it's, when it's hunched over, can look like it has that hump in its shoulders that is a telltale sign of a grizzly. Uh, so you really need to look at the snout, because um, black bears can be brown and really any shade in between. But uh, he definitely didn't seem bothered by us. We made lots of noise and walked by us, and he completely ignored us. So I think the bears are pretty well used to uh, human activity here, which can be a bad thing, actually. That can actually be dangerous for both the bears and humans. Uh, so I definitely think that carrying bear spray is a mandatory item when in this park. There are grizzlies in the area, as well as lots of black bears. Um, try to travel in groups when you can, whether running or hiking, and of course, always make lots of noise. Hey, bear. Good morning. So quite a bit of thunder off in the distance. As I said earlier, that definitely wasn't in the forecast, but hey, things can change quickly in the mountains. Fortunately, it's early. We're not going to make the pass for, you know, quite a few hours here, so. So some hikers up ahead just warned us that there's a bear in between us and them. Somewhere over to our right. Oh, there it is behind us. Okay, coming. Yeah, yeah so he, I think now, is going to be on the right-hand side. Yeah, he crossed yeah. over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have fun, guys. See ya. <laughs> so yeah, those guys are camping back at Jenny Lake, where we started, which is a really busy area, a uh, busy campsite. And they said that they're... There's a whole bunch of bears there. They're coming through the campsites. So they are quite well habituated to humans, which is definitely a bad thing, especially around campsites. Um, and apparently there were two bears, young cubs, I believe, that they had to relocate and they, they moved them 100 to 200 miles away. And believe it or not, one of them came back. <laughs> anyway, so we'll keep uh, making lots of noise here. Yeah, it's clearing up. Nice. Jacket is coming off. Yeah, it was not really necessary, I guess. that there was a storm up there like five minutes ago. <laughs>
big grouse right there. You know, one of the criticisms that we often get as trail runners is that we rush through trails like this and we don't take the time to really enjoy it, which couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, the section we're going through, this is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it's miles of kind of the same stuff. I don't think we're missing anything by running through this and it's, it's quite enjoyable to, to, to move fast, yeah, to move swiftly through this kind of terrain. It feels good. If you were walking through this part, it would take you all day and it would leave not a, very little time to stop at the lakes and things, which we've been doing to take photos. And so I think really trail running allows you to kind of move through the approaches, you know, through stuff like this, that's more forested a little more quickly in order to leave you a lot more time to enjoy the really beautiful stuff. And the reality is that if we were back country camping and doing this as a through hike over several days, we wouldn't have a chance to do it because you do need permits and those sell out way in advance. Plus we just didn't have the time. We had exactly a day to do this trail. And so what this ultimately means is that we can do and see a heck of a lot more in a single season than somebody who's only capable of hiking these kind of routes can. Some other hikers here just pointed out a moose out in the field. It looks like an adolescent maybe. That's pretty cool. Great day so far for wildlife sightings. Wow, this is a cool canyon. Yeah, this is super clear. Okay, so we're about 22 kilometers in, a few hours on feet. Uh, so that puts us at close to halfway, but we are about to start the big climb. The good news is it's completely blue sky, so we have no issues with weather, but we will feel the heat and the sun exposure, that's for sure. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm just uh, struggling. Is it the heat? No. I mean, it is hot, but I think it's definitely my PMS. So I often find two to three days before I get my period. I, I just feel really tired, have low energy, just, you know, overall a bit more tired than usual. So yeah. that's today, we're pretty much bang on. So we're three and a half hours in and uh, I already feel like it's been a long day. So it's a bit of a struggle, but I mean, I'm still having fun. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so it's just a bit harder than I would have liked. All right, up we go. I think arm sleeves are the most underrated piece of equipment 
They keep you warm when it's cold out. They keep the sun off. They act as a sunshade when it's really sunny. And you can get them, you can get them wet to help cool you down. We took every chance we could get to cool down and to rehydrate, because the distance and elevation change aside, today's real challenge would be with heat management. Hi there. Welcome. Beth Cabin Canyon. <laughs> Mind if we just take a quick peek inside? Okay. You guys paid for taxpayer money. Oh yeah? yeah. <laughs> Very cool. It's all downhill, all the way back to, uh, I don't know yeah. where you guys uh, parked. We parked at Jenny Lake. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Nice guy. Here we go. Up and at them. Wildflowers. Beautiful sunny day, can't ask for much more. Just over halfway, um, if you can't where we started down at the bottom of the canyon. We've still got, I think, a good 450, maybe 500 meters to climb. And then we drop down a bit, and then we climb a little bit more. And then it's all downhill. Woo. That's that lake we were at. We run. Three hundred meters left. Yeah. This is an alpine forest, up over three thousand meters. It's very cool. Very sturdy trees. Hi. 
Yeah, thanks for the work. This trail's great. Hey. Okay. Beware of post hole in. So now we drop down a few hundred meters and then we climb back up a second pass. Okay, so we just finished the descent into this beautiful basin here. This would be an awesome place to camp. So we've got one more climb to go up to Hurricane Pass, just a few hundred meters, and then it's all downhill from there. How do you find the altitude? Yeah, the altitude doesn't help. Well, we're getting up to 13,000 feet, 3,300 meters, for yeah. the second time here, so. Yeah, definitely feeling it. These alpine babbling brooks, these are my favorite thing in the world. I don't know why. You know when you hit a, like a meadow and it's green and the trail crosses over one of these, the water's cool. You can re flowers. There's flowers, you can refill your bottles.
just commenting on how different this pass is. It's very open compared to the first one that we went through. stopping here to enjoy the view and to finish our bagels with peanut butter. So I thought I'd tell you about how the Tetons reportedly got their names. Tetons in French is slang for breasts, I guess more directly translated as teats. And so apparently it was some French trappers who first named them Les Trois Tetons. But uh, it's more likely that they were actually named after the Teton Sioux American Indians. But hey, while much more plausible, it's much less fun of a story. What a day. Oh yeah. Oh my god. We're trying to finish this runoff and I literally just said that I was going to put the camera away. And we come across this. How many waterfalls can there be in one shot? I count four. This place, Jesus. Are you okay, babe? Camera okay? I think so. It's still recording. I was filming. Not paying attention. You okay? Are you hurt? Yeah, no, I'm totally fine. <laughs> Be fine. Are you okay, GoPro? Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Nice, okay. <laughs> that will make some fun footage. A bit of blood, but... No, it's fine. Okay, it's maybe fine. you put it away for a bit. Well, no, I wanted to get this last shot. Here we go. Why? They're just the most incredible campsites in this trail. Like that. Right back there is a campsite on that rock ledge under that waterfall with this as a view. Just a couple kilometers left. How are we feeling? I'm tired. You ready to be done? Ready to be sitting and eating. Yeah. French fries preferably. Yeah, that was a big day. Oh, yeah. It's not quite over. Just a couple miles to go, a few kilometers. There's the lake. Oh, it's 62K, not bad. 12 hours. Oh. How about a high five? Nice work. Big day. Ready for Tour de Mont Blanc. But not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Ready? 